Hi, I'm Sean, and you're watching Shopworks. On this episode of the Six Door Build, we're going to be uh, puttering away, working on all kinds of little stuff here. As uh, parts seem to be non-existently stocked ever since uh, last few years, there nobody's got nothing. So I'm just going to be working away a little here, a little there. Dump some fuel in her. Uh, fuel system's just about done, and uh, we'll see where it leads, I guess. guys uh, sorry this thing's taken so long here haven't had much free time to work on it uh, they got me flying all over Canada I've been up in uh, north end of the Haida Gwaii's up in uh, Nuvik and uh, all over the place so uh, bear with me when things slow down here in the fall I'll uh, have more time but uh, as things go here I'll try to put some smaller videos out just to have something uh, when I'm back here so hopefully uh, enjoy if not uh, can't do much about it. Well guys, sorry about the pause in, in between videos there, but uh, super busy summer. I wasn't around here a whole lot to be able to work on this. So uh, it's winter time now, things are slowing down, we'll be getting at her. So far I started uh, dumping some fuel in and uh, found out I forgot to tighten the hose clamp under here so that's uh, I guess a bonus to doing it here. Be dumping uh, some diesel in, start filling it up. Uh, unfortunately a uh, day late and a dollar short as our carbon tax seemed to rise again today. And the other thing I had done here is uh, the power steering lines I had to get them lengthened four and a half inches so it's uh, now custom and uh, replaceable hydraulic hose in between and uh, basically tighten yourself you can line them up you can do whatever so we'll be getting into that here so I was able to find a diagram for the ATS turbo that I happen to have or at least happen to have most of the parts with so what I originally thought I was going to do I bought uh, a new uh, crossover pipe here connect both banks of headers together or both banks, exhaust manifold banks together. Uh, it's uh, not quite where it needs to be. I'm going to have to tweak it a little bit. Uh, but my big problem is, is one of these studs here is uh, bad. And of course, nobody's got nothing around here. You know, I thought, hey, 7 16 by 14, that should be easy to find. Everybody should have one of those. <laughs> yeah, right. So that's uh, my first hold back. It's like, oh yeah, we can have that in like six weeks. Excuse me? <laughs> Uh, so waiting on uh, that, I found it on Amazon for like uh, a third the price and should be here in a few days. Uh, next problem I'm working on currently is the downpipe. According to this diagram here, I do not have the downpipe, it didn't come with my uh, engine I bought for the turbo. Uh, one of the, the few issues, I got another problem with the dipstick tube I'm going to have to address later on too for the tranny. That's a totally different setup. But what I'm thinking about doing is welding on a flange up here. This is a friction fit. It goes inside and then uh, looks like it bolts down back onto some tab I don't have down below on the uh, exhaust system there. So my theory is if I weld on a V-band, weld on the other half there and then I can fab up my downpipe and get it out to where I need to be and then we can uh, tie on with the uh, diamond eye system all the way to the back which should be pretty self-standard after doing the last one there so this is my eBay special here wasn't sure where else, I think it was eBay anyway online uh, it's my online special I'm going to be putting a port in here for the pyro I like the big beefy flanges here my old pipe was uh, in rough shape We're off just a little bit, probably a thickness of one of these, uh, so about quarter, three-eighths of an inch, bent too far in. I'm going to have 
to tweak it a bit. This is the old one here. I'm going to measure that just to make sure we're right where we're supposed to be. But the uh, reason I can't use it is I dumped probably a uh, better part of a cup of rust out of here. So I have a feeling she's pretty, pretty thin everywhere around here. So, new one it is. I guess here to here, flange is just under 20 inches. Here to here, flange is uh, 20 and a half inches. Flanges are a little bigger on here than here, so uh, yeah, I'm gonna have to spread it a little bit. Make it line up. And the profile is a little bit different here as well. There's a shorter piece here than there is on the other one. About five and a half inches straight there. And about four inches on this one. Well, guys, since I'm uh, running out of parts and pieces, I can't get my hands on on this long weekend here. Uh, I'm gonna throw the drive shaft in. Underneath here, I've uh, got the fuel tank in and everything, so I can start building out from that. And uh, to get the exhaust and everything, I can put the transmission uh, transfer case skid pan on. And uh, waiting for parts for doing the downpipe. Uh, the rest of the diamond eye kit here is uh, what I've got, plus the muffler on the table. So I can't start piecing this together really, uh, well, I'm trying to mock it up, make sure it all fits. So I can't really start piecing it together until I get the downpipe done, and this is a power stroke kit, so I'm building some stuff here with a stainless. And uh, working with the exhaust. A little close to the fuel tank. I don't remember it being quite that tight as uh, before, but I think I got enough space in there still. So put my fingers through. I think she should vibrate that much. I guess I still got to throw a zap strap on here, and then we're uh, good to go. So if I remember right on that exhaust there. I ended up cutting this piece off. I'm going to go out and have a look here in a minute. But a uh, piece of that skid pan, as you can see here, it uh, squares off. The tank itself doesn't. So I'm going to go out and have a look at the one ton. Okay, on here, on here, you can see how that. Uh, Pipe gets brought right in there, eh? Not a whole heck of a lot of room in here. But to be able to get that mount for the muffler in here and everything else on there. I ended up uh, cutting it. This tank here is pretty similar in spacing as well. You can tell I got a massive engine oil leak up there coming off the turbo. We've got a turbo coming for that, so we'll uh, play with that when the turbo gets here. In the meantime, the underbody won't rust. It's pretty tight in here. I got uh, pretty much up against the overhead door, so we'll have to get going on some uh, close quarter combat in here.
Oh, that's about how much we don't need. So I'm underneath here, uh, trying to figure the exhaust out. It's a little different setup because it's an IDI number one. Uh, not a power stroke. The exhaust I have here is for a power stroke. Uh, number two, I got a little uh, ahead of myself here, I think, with that uh, diesel fired heater. Uh, muffler's supposed to be going right uh, in this area. I'm not sure. I've got uh, got some space. I might be able to move it forward. I'm going to check that out. What I am doing, though, is... Uh, I'm not sure if you can see or not, but these have uh, multiple holes. I'm going to drop it down a little bit. Uh, reason I'm going to be dropping it down at least at the back here is so I have room, more room, I guess. You know, that fuel tank where I cut the corner off there. I don't know. I don't know if you guys can see that in the picture or not very well, where the fuel tank's dished out. And I'm just trying to drop that exhaust down as uh, low as I can there, give me a little more clearance. Same thing up here, using uh, the same exhaust uh, bushings there. Go to the front, so we'll see how this all pans out here as I go, I guess, and uh, what all I've got to change. One thing I can tell you though is it's uh, definitely going to be free flowing. Well, I've got it uh, just kind of hanging in there right now. Got the one clamp tightened up on there, so it's uh, keeping it in a straight line. Loosened off my exhaust and stuff. I'll probably have to come up with a shroud of some kind to protect my. Uh, fuel pump and stuff or end up having to move it again. Not sure uh, what yet, but uh, like I say just kind of hanging in there. This mount on the first 36 uh, inch piece off the front of the muffler is just kind of loose and sitting and uh, got a good old bungee cord holding the front up here. Still got to figure the uh, rest out on uh, where I'm headed with it. And I wish it sat a little higher up here, so I might do a, an offset or something, bring it up above this cross member here a little bit more. And I uh, can't believe what they want for a new piece of this tubing here. Uh, 78 bucks to 150 something. Kind of don't know, see if I can get a local shop to make me a piece for the front there. I don't think I have enough uh, downpipe to do her. It's up in the air and it's still too low for me. see here my next problem or not. My next problem is uh, you get this pipe here to line up over the axle. I've got to have about that much of a gap on it. With that much of a gap I'm uh, hitting the fuel tank there. So what I'm going to do is probably uh, weld on a piece I got left over from my crew cab. Uh, about a 8 inch piece that I uh, didn't end up using on it. I'll weld it onto here, extend it out, and uh, figure out where i got to cut her back down to. It's kind of hard to hold and measure and everything at once here. And the only one up here. So we'll uh, get that on, get the pipe on, and then uh, work our way back to the front. I also got to do the uh, crossover there for the up pipe still as well. And so what i got going on here is uh, a piece I had left over off my uh, crew cab when I did the 4-inch on it. Got it all uh, parallel to the table here and clamped up. So you got a bit of a gap at the top to keep her parallel, but uh, is what it is. So we'll uh, glue that up. I'll go run the uh, 252 with the stainless on her.
No daylight. I'll let that cool for a bit and uh, try test fitting her underneath. Well, in the meantime, I need to put a pyrometer probe right there. I don't know if you can make out the mark on her or not. That's where I figure the best fit will be. That's what I've got for the pyrometer. I need little things like that. I run over to the hydraulic shop and uh, get a bunch of couplings and end up using whatever works the best to uh, cut them in half. And uh, that's what I'll be doing over here with this one here. You cut her in half and drill her out while they're in. I guess the reason I'm uh, cutting them in half here is not only am I being cheap, but uh, that probe doesn't stick through very far. If I left the whole coupling on there, it gets blocked. You know, only threads on about that far anyway. So you got uh, about that much blockage, that much sticking out of there. Let me show you with an uncut one here. Not a whole lot sticking out. I've got it uh, welded on and extended out there. You can see the part number there, and uh, I'm out of pipe, so I'm as close as I can get. But I've got another issue at the back here now, which I think is uh, probably a lot more noticeable at this angle here. So what I'm gonna have to do is uh, this is this is mainly due to that. Uh, tank being you know another six inches deeper. So what I have to do is cut it. I'll bend it over in front there. I want to at least clear the shock with what I have for space. I'm gonna cut it with a zip cut, bend it over and uh, re-weld it so it comes down right where the recess of the tank is here. And uh, we'll have to retrofit the back end here for the tailpipe. It uh, probably gonna have to be extended and uh, lengthen backwards a bit. We'll uh, have to monkey with that because I, I don't want it right behind the tire here where it's sort of working out to be. I want to add in some uh, mud flaps and all the, the necessities for here because this is nowhere legal. i got to drop flaps down to center line to the axle minimum. Up over the axle now, clearing the shock, added on to the, the muffler, or the pipe to the muffler. And we're going down with all the straight sections I got down there, so I'm uh, running out of parts here. And by the way, these clamps are uh, just on here. I'm going to straighten them out later. I'm just trying to mock stuff up so I can make it fit. You can tell they're not even tight, some of them. That's about the only other piece I got left here is uh, this out of that diamond eye kit and the downpipe, which won't work for my application. There's the couple pieces of the, the downpipe there. Like I say, but uh, not gonna not gonna cut the mustard, so that's why it's just sitting off to the side here for now. Save it. Uh, probably go on one of the other power strokes later. 
So, don't have every tool in the shop here. I got no way of uh, bending it short of heating it up with a torch and uh, making a mess out of it. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to zip cut this out. Uh, so I marked it out roughly what I think I need. I might have to cut a little more on the, the tail there. Slit it. But I uh, don't want to take too much at once here. And we'll uh, bend it over and weld her back. Well, the whole idea of that uh, pie cut So I can tip that up after together here. We'll pack it up. Go under and test fit it. You can see how much of uh, an angle I've got under there already. That'll be an uh, inch and three quarters or so. So I'll get her tacked up and uh, test fit her. So as you can uh, you see the daylight in there. It's got a couple tacks on her. Uh, not a whole lot uh, I can do different here for right now. I do have a, a problem. I don't know if I can reach in here without blocking the camera or not. But I got uh, two finger widths between the tank and the pipe. So I think I need uh, a little more. We're close to that skid pan still. So I want to duck her out a bit. We'll open that piece of the pie a little bit more and. Uh, See if we can't make it fit a little bit better there. We've got lots of clearance at least between the shock and, and the uh, pipe, so that's good. Yeah, stick with that. Don't want to monkey with that too much. I have the next problem with the uh, exhaust coming out and uh, clearing the spring here. All that uh, issue with these uh, bigger Super Duty springs in here. So we'll. Uh, monkey with that uh, after we get this piece in here where I need it probably end up dropping the exhaust down a bit more and uh, changing some angles tucking it out near the where the rear bumper will be well guys I uh, went out looked at my other truck outside there and uh, seems here the u-bolt for hanging the, the exhaust is on the front of my spring hanger On my other truck, it's right about here, which would be the back of that uh, piece of pipe I stubbed in, which is odd. Granted, I stole the uh, exhaust hanger off a gas one for the back there, so I don't know if that's my issue or what my problem is. But, uh, kind of odd because the splice is up here at the front, not back on this end. Anyway, I went out there just to look at my clearances. I haven't had any problems with the other one since uh, 2019, and I got way less than I have right now. So uh, I think I'm going to just go with it. I'll probably end up having to tip the uh, exhaust down here a little bit. Probably be the lesser all evils to cut this pipe after and tip it back down a little further than trying to cut the 90 out of that other one there. So we'll... Uh, Weld up what I got going. Well, guys, I got it uh, sitting in place again. Like I say not tightening nothing down here till uh, the end. I've got it installed. Uh, still up above the tank, so I'm gonna have to extend that down. Be able to put the tailpipe piece on there. Uh, it's looking good as far as clearances now. Yeah, change the exhaust uh, hanger at the back around. That was. Uh, Aftermarket, I'm probably just going to go with some kind of aftermarket thing there too as well. Uh, keep it easy. Uh, looks like I'm going to need a bump stop over here. Didn't notice that before, really wasn't uh, paying too much attention to that, but I guess something we'll have to fix. And I'm thinking there should be still room here to uh, work my exhaust off that heater. Back down, might have to do a little extending run it out back over this way and I'll have to rework this around a little bit more to make it happen huh. anyways issues for another day I got some of my three inch parts and pieces and fittings here for uh, working my downpipe 
I'm going to be building it off, uh, converting it to 4 inch down below. So I got that stuff uh, here, or majority of it. Uh, I just ordered some more stuff there, so that'll have to wait until I can uh, get the rest of my parts. And in there, I've actually ordered some 4 inch exhaust stainless steel 409. I found a supplier up in Canada here, so that's a bonus. I don't have to cut my tailpipe down and uh, use it for now. So that'll be on its way. Uh, yeah, try to fight uh, the studs out and get that uh, crossover pipe in next year. So, I don't know, I think you guys can see pretty good here with the light. Uh, the one stud looks pretty good on the back side there. I'm probably not going to change that. I'll just uh, take the nut and uh, maybe chase it or something. This one here, pull the light back maybe. Maybe that'll show better. Or whatever anyway the top half inch or so between the nut and the piece the threads are all wore off it uh, I'm not a hundred percent sure why I'm guessing it has something to do with holding the downpipe and everything together there's uh, a bracket of some kind here that held the downpipe on pulled up into the slip fit on top there so uh, what I'm trying to do is get rid of that issue I'm gonna put a v-band up on the turbo Got the turbo sitting back in here, I'm going to have to go and uh, pull uh, the cast off it. I'm going to weld the V-band on it. Uh, probably right on the outlet where it is. I don't think I want to monkey too much with uh, everything else here. I don't want to start cutting it too close to the, the flange and warp anything. Uh, I'm going to be doing something a little, little different there. Taking with some 309. Uh, I'll throw a disclaimer out right now I've uh, never tagged I got a tag uh, John does all the tags so uh, I'll probably fire that up and uh, when I get back here next time and uh, try a few pieces on some some scrap stainless or some cast and stainless together and uh, give it a whirl and been 20 years since I really oxy settled anything so uh, <coughs> hoping the skill set still stills there so give it a whirl uh, give a few pieces of practice and then uh, get at her that stud there came out it was in uh, rough shape the nut was jammed on it so I'm going to suck that one in probably chase the threads on it first and uh, since I'm changing one I may as well change two I guess uh, the one on the other side will make three you should have done this while I had the engine out uh, was in a rush was going to reuse them I guess uh, you guys know how that story goes so uh, this one here doesn't have a nut on it. I can't get a pair of ice grips on there tight enough to break it free So I'm probably gonna have to get in there at the zip cut uh, cut her off weld the nut on her uh, He'll do some wonders on there as well, and of course I was able to get the uh, Easy one out over there the one that you could actually get penetrating oil on on the back side and uh, so You can tell by that shiny silver. There's uh, still something in there I'm going to have to weld a nut on that one as well and uh, give her the good old what's for. So, uh, yeah. Fun times. And here I ran into uh, another snag. I'm trying to get this uh, tailpipe in there. No matter which way I cut it, if I didn't uh, raise it up at this angle here. You guys can see the angle there. It's angled up quite a bit, uh, mainly due, I think, to the, the body lift. If I didn't uh, angle it up, I'd be way down uh, center line of the axle, and I'd look absolutely retarded to have the exhaust way down here. You know, you're... Yeah. So, what I'm going to be doing, I uh, ordered a tip, a turndown tip on it. So hopefully uh, that'll come and tip it down here. Uh, don't like the looks of it the way it sits. Hopefully with the tip it looks a lot better, but uh, You know I really don't have a, a whole lot of choices. I'm not clearing the springs here by all of a lot and I'm actually using the old uh, old hanger there still where it be factory supported Or uh, roughly originally supported there. So at that point trying to get it back up up near the top of the body. So I see I'm gonna flip these over after any ones that I have to face down. I'm going to cut them off so I'm not uh, braining myself or 
looking stupid with them and then I'll uh, flip the ones that I can upside down so I don't have to worry about them. Well my next uh, fun time here is going to be with this uh, 309 stainless rod. Kind of one of those things I've uh, never really played with before is the TIG. I've uh, spent a fair bit of time on a MIG, uh, stick, all that stuff. Uh, never TIG so I'm going to have some uh, some fun. Somebody's going to be laughing anyway I'm sure. I'm going to give her a whirl. Uh, haven't brazed or uh, oxycetylene welded per se for about uh, 20 some odd years too now. So uh, John usually does the TIG work but I guess it's time for me to learn. I dug the old uh, 220 out here. It's actually one of my favorite shop welders. It does everything quite nicely. Uh, maybe I'll show a little more in another video there. Or possibly even this one. So I've got that. Uh, it's nice because it's a multi process, right? So I can uh, make stick, TIG, all that other great stuff. So we got it set up here with a liquid cool torch, even though I've never used it. Kind of said, hey, you know, if we're putting a welder together let's go that way with it so it'll be uh, be a little interesting got a cooler down below here Coolmate 3 but uh, like I say never played with it myself so uh, I guess we're all in for a surprise well guys uh, don't laugh at me too much here I'm going to set it up uh, where I'm going to be welding that stainless I think 16th tungsten uh, roughly 18 gauge 16 18 gauge somewhere in there Got the cooler kicked on. So yes, I know this isn't uh, stainless, and it's not what I'm going to be welding on for thickness, but uh, something I can practice with because it is uh, a cast still, and I've got this chunk of stainless. After once I run a few beads and get used to it, I'll try uh, playing between the two and maybe weld that gap up. Just some scrap left over from an intercooler project on my crew cab. So we'll give it a shot and uh, see how bad I screw this up. You might have to check your airflow again. I set it down. Okay. Where I think it should be. First of all, I'm probably going the wrong way, aren't I? Huh? So first of all, I'm sure I gotta walk the cup that way, right? Not away from it. Yeah, puddle. Well, just for running a bead. Okay, I guess you hear it tinking already. <laughs> a lot of heat in there. What are you setting this now? You still need that high current. I still need it for this, yeah. I find it a lot easier when you're sitting on it. Mm, probably. Or you have to for your throttle. Mm, get around to it. Learning here still. Call it operator error. You might have too much of an angle on it. I think you might be right.
I can't get the stainless to go into the cast. I can't get the stainless to want to work into the cast. Maybe I'm not getting a big enough puddle. Definitely not as easy as I was hoping it to be. Definitely not call that a pro, but I'm getting better. Heck of a lot of crap underneath though. A little too hot. Well, I've been playing around here for the last 20 minutes or so. Sharpen the tip again here for the second time. But uh, I don't know. God hates a coward. I guess may as well uh, may as well get at her. My last one there. Still got penetration. Tell you one thing. I'm not going to start on the critical cast though. I'm going to work over. Uh, Put the flange on here on this uh, 90 to start with. Something easy to practice on comparatively. Something uh, I can do without worrying too much about uh, about the cast. There, that's going to be a little a little more difficult on that. So give her a whirl. Nice thing about this pile of parts over here is I can always buy more. The uh, turbo flange, on the other hand, is a little dicier. You know, I guess everybody's got to start somewhere. I know my uh, first time welding aluminum, uh, jumped right into it with a uh, spool gun welding the flat deck with bins and stuff on it. Uh, should have been my first project? Probably not, but uh, I guess when you need something, you need something, and uh, you kind of need this, so I'm going to set up here and uh, see if I can't give it a good old college try and uh, see what we end up with. Actor in a few spots and uh, where do we go from there? That I can live with. Uh, as long as I keep doing that, uh, I'll call it a success. Back at a few more spots and uh, give her a go. So I'll finally burnt up my first piece of filler rod you know all the way back from uh, still starting to learn there uh, still very starting to learn but right from the beginning I guess I finally burnt up one piece of filler rod uh, is it beautiful I'm not stacking dimes I can tell you that but uh, you know it'll look good behind the turbo in front of the firewall definitely getting penetration in on it so 
hardest parts yet to come. Well, that's uh, first actual weld, I guess, for uh, using a TIG. I wouldn't say it's uh, beautiful, but it's definitely going to do. It's uh, you know look okay where I'm putting it. So uh, yeah, still a little leery. Try that cast on the the turbo. I might uh, might weld another flange on here. In the meantime, set that one up and weld it. Now this uh, this rod here is what's left out of two so far since I started farting around with the dig. Well guys, we got uh, these two on here. Now I'm going to be working on this. I made a phone call to my cousin there the other day, and uh, it was last night. And uh, we started talking a bit more on it. And originally we were planning to go uh, low and slow, so that's, uh, you know, tack, let it cool, tack, let it cool, and just kind of build your tacks over each other. Uh, it's one way of doing it, but always keeping it cold, kind of like doing uh, body work on the tin. Uh, I don't have the best patience sometimes, so we talked around a little bit more and I uh, think we're going to throw this on the uh, barbecue there, in my case, and uh, leave the barbie on, I'll throw it out there, run her up somewhere between 250 and 400 Fahrenheit, and uh, bring it in, we'll put a few tacks on it around, take it back out, make sure she's still up there, and Start putting a couple beads here and there, and then back in and out a couple of times, throw it on the barbecue, and then uh, when we're done welding, throw it on the barbie again for a while and let her just kind of permeate and bring her back out. And uh, That's my plan, we'll see how it works. I guess if not, I'll be uh, building the flange and uh, whatever else here after if this thing cracks on me. Be fun, but uh, doable. Anywho, let's hope it doesn't get to that point. Well, I'm going to throw a little bit of a disclaimer out here, uh, first of all. Uh, just because I'm doing it this way, if it works out, doesn't mean uh, it's guaranteed. So, uh, you know, do it your own risk. We'll check on her outside and uh, see where we're at. Hopefully we'll be able to bring it in. Let's see what we're sitting at uh, on the gauge. And for us. Ways to go. What's for lunch? Three sixteen, three twenty two, depending where. Three hundred. Probably all I get here pretty soon. Lined up, uh, we got Tacker. A few spots here. Sure. Hard spot.
compact in four spots. 240-ish. I'm going to try running a little bit of a few more tacks on her, I guess. I may as well keep welding, I'm still up around 300. Let's go with the flow. Sharpen my tungsten. Back in the Barbie. A little hard to hold the solid arc on that, got her balled up. That's my, uh, Basically, third piece I've ever TIG welded here, uh, other than playing on that brake drum a little bit. So, uh, try not to judge her too hard. Just talk to me frugal. I think I'm going to toss that one back on the Barbie to cure. 
I guess we're not there yet, but uh, it's still in one piece. Four seventy ish. Give uh, my uncle a shout there, Uncle Wally. He's a welder too, and uh, he says I don't even have to waste my time with the sand. Just bring it down slowly on here. Start turning one down, and uh, I've got three three burners in here. I'll turn the center one down. I'm up to four seventy, so I'll probably drop this one to low, run her for a bit, and then uh, I'll shut her off, and then start lowering the other ones. Uh, over the course of a couple hours here. See how she goes. Still slowly winding her down here. Get her cooled off slow and uh, already shut the Barbie off here, I think. About as low as I can be right now. Oh, let's open her up and, uh, oh look, still in one piece. Slightly warmer than ambient, but not by much. Should be able to do the trick. At least bolt that on tonight. If something had to turn out good, I suppose it better have been this piece. I'll take it. Well, continuing piecing uh, exhaust together down there. Got this flange done up here for the bottom of the downpipe. I'm going to be Tacking it together and trying to fit her up underneath, and then uh, just got a piece in a piece of pipe, so I'll uh, get gluing it on. Tacking it up uh, right now for two reasons. One, it's easier to grind four tacks if it don't fit. And uh, number two, I don't have all the heat in it for holding it underneath. So. Set her in and uh, see how much more damage I have to do. Well, I've got it uh, tacked together heading from the turbo down to the other flange here. So from flange to flange, we're uh, Sitting pretty good. I got both clamps off right now. Just got it tacked up. Pull it out, uh, hit her up on the welding table there. Finish off the rest of the stuff here and uh, pretty much have that part done on the crossover. Well, I got my 3 to 4 inch adapter welded on there and my downpipe made. I put that in when everything cools off in the morning. I decided how I'm going to solve this now. I'm going to cut it right about there. I'm going to put that tip on there. I think that'll uh, make a world of difference with it. Just in uh, looks and uh, aesthetics of uh, getting stuff back down the pipe. So I'm going to zip that off and uh, put her on. done for that for tonight it's uh, almost one so I'll play out of here in another uh, couple of days so trying to get what I can done hopefully get uh, at least one movie out here for you well there's uh, two schools of thought on this uh, I'm gonna be putting some heat wrap on uh, some people say it rusts the stuff out I really can't see it because well if you're getting it wet that means you're moving if you're moving that means you got heat coming off it so it should dry out uh, number two it's stainless so uh, I'm gonna tape it up uh, it goes right by the transmission there so don't want any extra heat on that and the wiring connector for the valve body and everything on that one side 
and probably do the same again for the other piece here. So we'll uh, start wrapping that and then uh, if I have any left over probably go by where the diesel heater is underneath I'll do a spot there on the exhaust. So One thing uh, I was reading it comes with uh, a little stainless steel bands there but you know I've, I use these things for uh, work there for tying stuff up and they really don't get tight tight. Uh, the ones that you crank and fold over and then bend the tabs do, but these are more like a tie wrap where you stick them in and under pressure they seem to back off. So what I'm going to be using is uh, stainless steel hose clamps. I should throw a couple more bands on and cheap ones. on here or something. Not quite enough thick enough for the tools that we have in the trailer? No, but what they say in the lovely instruction is you're supposed to twist it. Mm -hmm. Pair of needle nose. Um, kind of a gimmick to me, but doing it that way. Not better than them other ones or them number tags mm. that they like to send out. The ones that don't work. I might have to suggest using these because you don't even cut yourself on the end, eh? Suggest telling them to forget them hundred dollar tools or two hundred dollar tools and just go for the needle nose. That's uh, one done. Yeah, it's gonna have to it's gonna come yeah. apart. Yeah, you're right. What did I, you just say? Yeah, you're right. Trying to be chief. I bet that won't come the video. I'm trying to be cheap. Got a lot of money sunk into this thing. As it is, I need to order another roll of this, I'm sure now, So I want to do that spot by the heater. Ready for me? 
we'll probably have to band it and go over it and reband it. You going to use one of those cheap bands? No, just put the hose clamp on it for now. Once I get past here. in and uh, clap them on. Well I'd uh, love to tell you there's lots of room to film and stuff in here but there's not. I got that uh, downpipe put in, clamped up top and bottom. You can see how tight it is up here. Comes down right by the tranny. Got this dipstick tube I'm gonna have to do something different with too. Got, uh, that dipstick tube used to bolt on uh, somewhere in the way of that uh, crossover pipe for the up pipe for the turbo. And you can uh, see how she ties back together there. And again, just trying to keep the heat away from the tranny. Well, guys, it's uh, hard to see anything in here, but uh, I couldn't get that bolt uh, for the stud out of there at all. Tried and tried and. Well, the nuts on it, everything, couldn't get it out, had to drill it and drill it. Putting a helicoil in it, and uh, had to cut out my brace in here for the suspension, which is uh, not a big deal. I'm going to actually come back in and uh, weld these sliders in here on the inside, just give it a little more beef and brace the outside of it. So, not a, not a huge issue there, but, uh, you know, not everything goes smooth here, so... Uh, angle drill and worked it up and I'm just trying to get her tapped out now. Well obviously uh, can't bend those little pickup magnets too easy around here but uh, a little bit of tape and you see the schmag coming off it right there all the filings that uh, potentially could go through the turbo. Run that through there a few more times. There's new tape through it a few more times till it comes out clean and uh, we'll get her. Well, I got the studs put in there, so they're tightened down, tighten the other piece of the manifold up there. Put that crossover pipe in here. And uh, basically the exhaust should be more or less done. And I can start working on other things here like uh, this transmission dipstick tube. Got a Rework it, come out at a different angle, uh, totally different location actually. Probably uh, extend it somehow here. Bend it and extend it. And uh, a bunch of other odds and ends. Well again, uh, not much room to film underneath here while I'm working, but uh, got her buttoned up, uh, best of my knowledge here. I'm going to throw the inspection cover back on that tranny in a bit. But... Uh, you know, I can say the exhaust is uh, pretty much done now. I can put that oil filter back on. And uh, that pyro will probably be part of a different uh, different movie at this point. 
probably wouldn't do the gauges and sensors and stuff. Uh, get her on. But uh, yeah, she's uh, she's pretty much done here. Got the downpipe done. My three inch to four inch. All the way back. And out the back here. So, exhaust, check. Well, again, guys, sorry uh, about the way it was uh, taking so long. Summer was busy. Uh, and didn't have much chance to get at this. There was other pressing projects, which I uh, did some videoing on. And uh, just didn't have time to even get them out, so... Uh, be getting a bunch, uh, a bunch of six door stuff, and then a bunch of other stuff here, uh, a little bit here, a little bit there. So uh, we'll get some more, more stuff coming, and uh, hopefully get back at this uh, here in the next couple days again. So if you like what you see and uh, like some of the stuff I'm working on, uh, like, subscribe, give a thumbs up, and uh, we'll see you around next time.